Hi everyone, my name is Heather and I'm the person behind Happy Puppy Truffles. Today I wanted to share with you guys a fun project that you can do using some traditional pieces of origami to make kind of like a kusadama. Um, I wanted to kind of make a flower that kind of looks like a hydrangea, so um, I thought I'd take a really large uh, balloon origami and then put different little primrose flowers all over it to make it look like a um, ajisai, like we call in Japan, or a hydrangea. So this is kind of the pieces I've got ready here. I've got all these flowers made. There's, um, you know, of course, six sides to a cube, and I'm going to use four flowers per side. So I have 24 different um, little flowers here. And I used uh, tomp paper, because I think that was always has such beautiful, beautiful hues. And um, I'll just be kind of randomly, you know, putting them together when I put them on the ball when we're done. Now, this piece of paper back here is the... Um, paper I'm going to be using to make the balloon. Now this is some Bazille uh, craft paper. Sometimes you might see it for scrapbooking. It's a little thicker. I wanted something thicker to hold the weight of all of the flowers that I want to put on here. And um, this is about 30.5 by 30.5 centimeters. And all the flowers I used were made with just regular 15 by 15 centimeter paper cut into quarters. So each piece, each flower was seven and a half centimeters by seven and a half centimeters. So um, I'm hoping that when we get everything you know all completed here then I'll be able to put you know a few of these on um, like so and we can then kind of make a pretty kind of cube sort of kusadama that kind of looks like an ajisai in some ways so um, I wanted to just show you guys really quick how to fold the uh, balloon here and I, I'll have a link for you guys if you need to be reminded of how to fold this primrose flower it's a pretty easy flower and it has a lot of uses so you know, I think you can find some ways to find that useful I'll have a link in the description but for this guy here it might be a little tricky to fold because you can't really blow up this balloon because it's going to be a little thick but uh, I'll show you the steps we want to take here we want to start off with a water bomb base and my paper does have a pattern textured side I'm going to put that on the bottom and I'm just going to start off here by folding my paper into a big triangle of course you want to try to keep things as straight as you can. And if you need to, you can use a ruler or something to help you along, or you can use your fingernails, although it can be pretty hard when you're using thick paper like this to do that. But. And then with the pattern side up, I'm going to fold in half both ways here. And this will give me the preliminary creases I need so that I can do the next step here, which is to collapse this down. If we look at those diagonal creases, pinch on opposite sides and shimmy it around until we get to this nice triangular shape. This is the time when you can really take some time to get everything smoothed out, um, you know, get, get some time to get your creases completed. Um, if you didn't get them very strong before, you can really focus on getting it clear now. The more we can keep these creases really flat, then the easier everything will come together the way we want it to. And then when we do a balloon, of course, we start with this bottom edge and we're just going to roll this part up to the center. I'm going to give it a little crease with my ruler. Do the same thing with the other side too. Flip it over, do the same thing on the other side. So that we get a nice diamond shape here. Then I'm just going to be taking each of these sides and folding into this kind of a center that I can imagine between everything. And this part can be pretty tricky because there's a lot of paper here. But I'm just going to take my time and make sure I make a really good crease. And then I'll be taking this flap and sliding it into this pocket to kind of secure this edge of the box off. So I can kind of get that stuck in there good. I'm just going to repeat those steps on the remaining sides. 
And this doesn't have to have perfect creases and everything because I am, you know, don't worry about it pooching out a little and stuff. When we open it up, we'll get the sides taken care of. And then I'll be covering most all of the surface with the flowers. So, you know, don't worry about things being a little imperfect or having a strange little dent to them or something like that. Now, this is really just about getting a base shape down here for us to put our flower on when we get everything going. So it doesn't really have to be perfect. I'll just get all four of these in here. And it is, does really require a lot of pressure to get that to crease well, so and don't hesitate to give it a good scrape with your ruler. <laughs> so I get something like this. And I'm going to be, like I said, opening this up, and there's really no point in trying too hard to get it uh, to get some air in there because this is really not going to get blown up. But what we can do instead is to push down on the top and to try to pull apart things here until we can get to a new shape. And it's just really about pulling things and putting a little pressure on the top here to get it to poof out enough so that hopefully we can slowly get this side identified as we go. And you just keep rotating around and pulling out until we can really get things out here to a size that's going to be the way that we want it to be. And I'm going to get this bottom part done too. And then I'll be using, I can even use it now, let me get like a orange stick or something to help poof things out a little bit if you need to. Just really about until you can find everything at the right angle to collapse it out. You see how we're kind of getting a shape here now, finally. And then I do want to try to get things so that I get as close to these little edges I created when I folded these sides over to create this open space here. And you can kind of, from this side, I can kind of push in and go in from the inside of the box to create a crease. And then I can get this one going between those two points. And then on this side, I want to try to do the same thing. And if it's proving to be a little difficult here, you can really just, the hole in this is a lot bigger than you think it is. I'm just gonna put, push through because I really want to try to get the, the, the corners of this really set. And you are probably smushing the paper a lot on that other side. Don't worry about it too much right now. We're going to just first focus on getting the shape completed here. And then when we cover this with flowers, it'll become less apparent that there's, you know, we've been less than kind to this end here. <laughs> you might even get a little crease. I've gotten a tiny little crease there from pushing in a little bit. There we go. That should give you a nice completed kind of cube. And then we can just take all of our flowers and put them on here. And I'm just going to actually use uh, double sided tape to try to get this on here good because I don't want to have to um, worry about glue drying and stuff like that. So I've kind of got the flowers just sort of randomly, uh, you know arranged. So as you go around you can kind of try to alternate the position of things. You can either use double-sided tape or glue. Either way works pretty good. I think that double-sided uh, tape works nice just because you can have a nice good stickiness to this as you go around. And like I said if I've got this part that's the 
part that sticks out like this. I just want that to kind of point in a different direction. It was up here on the top, and then I have it going down here, so I'm just going to have it go to the side here now. And I'll just go ahead and do this for all four sides, and the, uh, six sides, excuse me, and I'll show you guys what it looks like when we're done here. So when you finish, you should have something that kind of looks like this. And the, uh, you know, general feel for it, uh, if you notice by putting that point on each of the corners, you get like a nice little kind of flattened surface. If you don't like that kind of geometry of it all, you could kind of mess it up a little bit, go in a different order so that things look a little bit more random. But uh, this kind of gives you this cool little three-dimensional looking uh, kusadama that you can then thread, uh, you know, so, uh, then needle through through the bottom hole up through the top if you like. And um, the uh, string itself will, of course, go straight through the hole all the way up to the top part. So you'll want to put a big, like, button or ball in there so that it just pulls out through the top. But uh, creates kind of a fun, neat little project that you can use. You can also just have it sitting on a table or something for a decorative piece. But um, it's just one way that you can use some of the traditional origami in a fun and different way to create a cool little decoration for springtime here. All the uh, ajisai or hydrangeas around the, our house are in bloom is beautiful. So uh, it's one of my favorite times of year. So um, I'll have some more fun projects like this to share with you guys in the future. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye.